someone who has never coached before to lead a team to a championship right away, frankly, that should be insulting to other coaches. Well, it took Paul Maurice 26 years as a head coach to get a title as he did last night for the Florida Panthers. My gut feeling is J.J. Redick will not have that long in L.A. to get a championship. We're on Sportsmanlike, presented by Progressive Insurance. On his 40th birthday, he gets introduced yesterday, J.J. Redick does, as the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers at a press conference in L.A. And, of course, he is someone with talent at Robert Half. They know that. Nine of ten hiring managers are having difficulty hiring today. Robert Half here to help at Robert Half. They know talent. Visit roberthalf.com today. And obviously, the Los Angeles Lakers hire J.J. Redick. He may be talking about Bronny James in just a couple of days on his team as somebody with some talent long term, maybe for them. There were a lot of conversations yesterday, and there have been a lot of conversations about Redick, and he tried to squash the narratives around those conversations. What misconceptions or concerns about you that you've heard in the last few weeks are you the most like looking forward to dispelling? I don't really have a great answer for your question because I, I really don't give a f Like, honestly, <laughs> I want to coach the Lakers. I want to coach the team. I don't want to dispel anything. I don't. I want to become a great coach in the NBA, and I want to win championships, and I want my players to maximize their careers. That's all I f care about. Smalls, I'm just going to say it. Uh, I think he's either going to be really good or really bad. You don't think there's any I don't gray think there's area. any in between. I think he is already that he has some traits that you're like, oh, this guy is going to be really good. Then he has moments where you're just like, oh, oh like. And which one did that fall in? That, what bucket is that in? See, a lot of the Lakers fans loved that. And I get why. I was surprised he was. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm going to sound like a prude and, and, and all like dorky with this. I was surprised he cursed as much as he did at a live press conference, having come from live television. Mm -hmm. He's been on first take in games. Like, you know you're on live television. He's cursing like crazy yesterday. I was surprised that side of him came out while on television yesterday. Am I wrong to think that? I was a little surprised as well, just because... To your point, he knows not to swear on ABC. He knows not to swear on first take. Yeah, why didn't you swear with Doris <laughs> and Breen? What's the difference? But I think that was intentional yesterday. I think he was setting a tone for what he is going to be as the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. This is not J.J. Redick, the player. This is not J.J. Redick, the podcaster. This is not J.J. Redick, the broadcaster. This is J.J. Redick, head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, and he's coming in with a certain edge. And I think he's setting the tone for what we should expect him to be in this role. I think his the way in which he's going about things will have to change because I still think he's in analyst mode because like he was talking yesterday at the press conference and breaking things down in a way that is amazing for us as fans in media and what he has been doing for the last few years here at ESPN, as well as on his podcast, where he's breaking down the specifics of the game. Mm -hmm. And he's specifically talking about the numbers as it applies to the Lakers. Ultimately you stop talking that way because you're the head coach of the Lakers. You're not analyzing the Lakers publicly. Right. And I'm not blaming him for doing that. It's just, that side of him has no choice but to change. You can't get up there when you're actually the head coach after games and talk about the percentages or the best ways the Lakers are playing defense. He specifically said something yesterday where he's like, you know, the last four years, the Lakers defense with Anthony Davis has proven out to be better when he is hand to touch. What that means is that he's playing up on, a, on an offensive player, playing man-to-man, -man, and he's physically able to touch him. He then talked about, well, it's better than drop coverage, Anthony Davis going back, or switching on a pick where you guard the other man, a wing or whoever it is. That's like really hardcore mind-the-game podcast basketball with LeBron James. But you're talking about your own team. Yeah, you don't want to be so forthcoming. No, and like it's great for us. But no coach gives that, even the nicest and kindest of coaches, even the coaches you love, from Andy Reid to Mike Tomlin to Steve Kerr, whomever, it may, they're not giving you that. Which I completely understand, but in his defense a little bit, he's he may have signed the contract and had his introductory presser. He's not, he hasn't coached a game right, yet. Right. So how does he know how to switch off the analyst role 
and go into the coaching role when he hasn't done it yet. Well, he certainly knew how to switch off the analyst role when he's cursing like crazy at a, on live television yesterday, to be fair. Now, let's go through some of the things that he said with all of the speculation. Is he going to do this? Is he going to do that? How is he going to approach this, et cetera? So he discussed the expectations that come with the role of, of being the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers. I know what the expectations are, and the expectation is a championship. And so it's, it's my job, it's our staff's job, it's Rob's job, it's all of us to deliver a championship caliber team. That's what I signed up for. Okay, so deliver a championship caliber team. Here's a dirty little secret with all of this that no one wants to seem to acknowledge. The Lakers actually have good role players. It's the two stars that may not be good enough to win a championship right now. I don't know as great as LeBron was last year and as great as Anthony Davis was last year. I don't know if those two guys together are good enough to win a championship right now. If you look at some of the players they have on their team around them, if healthy, Austin Reeves, every team in the league would take. Jared Vanderbilt two years ago was a guy that every single team wanted that was a switchy defender up front. Gabe Vincent, when healthy, was a starting point guard in the NBA finals two years ago. They have enough in terms of role players. If coached right, Rui Hachimura was unbelievable in the playoffs two years ago. I'm just saying, as great as LeBron and AD were last year, I actually don't know that that is great enough to beat a Tatum and Brown or to, obviously, they're not going to beat Jokic and Murray. So that's part of this. The expectations, I think we're, we're hiding the part that the, the two best players may not be good enough yet for the Lakers. All right, now, the other thing is he, is he going to continue the podcast. He discussed that yesterday. For the time being, and hopefully it's a very, very long time, uh, I am excommunicated from the content space. So I, there would be no podcast. We'll, we'll do something uh, when I have a breather uh, from what we have coming up. I'm going to be drinking out of a fire hose for the next month. But at some point, uh, we'll, we'll just do something for all the people that listened, and we'll have a small little video. But I, I'm, I'm done with podcasting for now. All right. I mean, he... I understand we all would want him to continue the podcast with LeBron. Can you imagine? First first time that they have a very bad loss. What a distraction. I can't believe that they're making this a priority when the priority should be to go out there and win a championship. It's a very smart thing for them to nip that in the bud right away. He said he and LeBron did not talk throughout this process. You rolled your eyes. Go ahead. Come on. I'm just supposed to believe that you guys are buds, you're business partners, you do a podcast together. Okay, let me take a step back for a second. If you were going to be the head coach of the Lakers, or, or like, let's say you, if you were going to do anything that was beyond this or somehow we had a, a relationship to and we already worked together, you think that I wouldn't have texted you at all and been like, hey, good luck in that process or let me know if I can help in any way? I wouldn't talk to you about it. I actually, I actually agree with his approach on that one. I don't think you can. I think you got to take the Lakers job more than you take the LeBron job. But you, you don't think that you would acknowledge it in any way? Oh, I think if there your may coworker be coworker was going to be your coworker in another space. It's no, it's your coworker becoming your boss. Is it his boss? Well, that's the other. <laughs> is, is it his boss? Is JJ Redick LeBron James's boss in title? Yes. In, in reality, no. There, LeBron They're James peers. does not have a boss in anything he does. Not basketball, not business, not anything. I'm not talking about his personal. I leave that to the side, right? I'm talking, I'm talking about the, the business and basketball side that he presents. No, he doesn't have a boss. And how could you go from being someone's peer, from being someone's collaborator, to all of a sudden they're your boss? That's an interesting transition. And I think we'll see it more exist in the peer space that they will have a mutual respect for one another and it'll be interesting to see when they come to an impasse how that plays out well jj reddick talked about i didn't want to talk to him about this because you know he's my friend and business partner on this well you're not friends anymore like that's part of the management and leadership part of it like you have to understand you no longer can be friends with lebron james you're not friends you may have been friends